Now we come to the portion of the service before we do our Bible study that we talk about some end times news and prophecy update as we do each week. And again, we want to welcome the online church and subscribers around the world. Thank you for joining with us and partnering with us and sending us your prayer requests and praise report. There's a lot of talk that was going on this past week, as some of you know, about the uh, Russian plane that crashed in uh, the Sinai uh, Peninsula in Egypt. And um, ISIS is claiming um, to that, and there's a lot of reports from the Jerusalem Post and also CNN, and a lot of other news agencies are uh, bringing out the same information. And uh, most of the officials are saying most likely uh, a bomb caused this plane by ISIS or ISIS affiliate that's going on. Again, there's no formal conclusion that has been reached by the intelligence community. Um, But you also see the rhetoric behind it, uh, the ISIS focus goal, you know, to do these sort of acts Um, in the Washington Post. And there was a video that the Islamic State, they had the celebration uh, with the Russian uh, jet that crashed and they were giving free candy and, you know, and just celebrating just kind of like what happened in 9-11, where you have a lot of these Muslim countries celebrating and getting all excited about that. Same thing that happened on this one. The British government also announced on Wednesday that it had become concerned that the plane may have been brought down by an explosive device. And so they're still, of course, doing the investigation work. They're sending a team in there uh, right now to uh, deal with it all. Um, But most security experts and investigators saying that it was unlikely uh, to have been struck by a missile at 30,000 feet. Most of the missiles do not hit that high up in the, the sky. Uh, But the topic is very sensitive uh, to Russia because uh, those uh, warplanes have launched these raids against ISIS uh, in Syria. And uh, for Egypt, uh, it depends heavily upon the revenue of the tourism industry. So there's there's something going on within this whole story as well. Uh, If a bomb killed these 100 or 224 passengers plus the crew, um, it's definitely going to undermine the tourism industry there in um, Egypt. And uh, Egypt is still trying to recover from the political turmoil that was going on. So this is just fueling the tension uh, and the issues in the Middle East. And uh, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. On another potential point, it wasn't brought up in any other news point, but when you see this sort of thing and you look at the footage or some of the pictures of how the plane is on the ground and how quickly the they got the passengers out or you know, the ambulance and took everyone, something's a little fishy with this story and what's happening. And we mentioned this has a lot of the the makings of what is called a false flag. And uh, when that happens, this is where everyone's attention is focusing on this and they're distracted while something else is happening behind the scene. So this is a potential uh, setup for something else that's going on. Also, speaking of ISIS, a report that came out of the JihadiWatch.org on uh, Wednesday Muslims in Australia give over $35 million to fund jihadist terror. And so there's, a, again, a high alert here in Australia now uh, by radicalized Muslims or by homegrown militants returning from fighting over the Middle East, uh, having raised the threat level to high, unleashed a series of high-profile raids in major cities here in Melbourne and also in Sydney primarily as well. And again... Uh, the intelligence agency here, they're starting to look at some of the funding of what's going on and doing this investigation. And uh, the anti-money laundry agency says in this report suspected terrorism financing and this had tripled in this past year uh, with over 50 million which have been supported by Islamic militants being investigated. And so the agency, again, uh, the the case studies, there's over 367 cases this last year compared to the previous year before was over 118. So you're starting to see the escalation. We're starting to see more of the uh, militant and the Islamic uh, uh, terrorism happening here at home in, in Australia. And there's over 120 Australians who are believed to be fighting with ISIS. And uh, there's some that are even saying that they're holding uh, some leadership positions in uh, ISIS as well. On an economic issue, and this is something that we're starting to see uh, how the the world and the economies around the world are going to a cashless society. Well, Sweden is on track to become the world's first uh, um, cashless society. Uh, The crediting and the shifting uh, towards electronic only transactions, especially with these new mobile um, payment system called Swish, 
and um, it uh, facilitates real-time deposits with no uh, minimum spending. So again, as they say, cash is an important uh, means in many countries, but it's no longer that in Sweden. And there's less than 80 billion uh, Swedish crowns, which is their um, money currency there, in circulation, which is about 8 billion euro dollars. And they say that only uh, 40 to 60 percent is really in circulation. So the remaining part is in people's homes and their sock drawers and or it's done through uh, uh, the criminal activity, how they're still paying in cash that way. And there's a lot of contributions to the reasoning why they're moving this way. But uh, again, uh, you see a lot of countries are moving to a cashless society. It's so much easier you know, to do your pay pass and things like that. Uh, The downfall is there's a lot of other challenges with cyber criminal activity going on. Um, There's also, um, you know, how to figure out responsibility to give a 10 year old, you know, access to a debit card. You know, so instead of paying them cash, you know, here's a debit card and things like that. Uh, Pensioners uh, unfamiliar with technology find it difficult using this as well. And uh, those who uh, don't have access to it will continue to use cash in the future and cannot be um, um, uh, decriminalized or um, where they can't, you know, where it's, it's a lot of the banks are not wanting to take cash anymore, you know, so you shouldn't be penalized because you still have cash, but that's kind of where it's going, where uh, it's just going to be a cashless society. Also, speaking of Sweden, Sweden is the undisputed Muslim rape capital of Europe. Uh, thanks to the mass importation of these adult Muslim men, many have uh, passed themselves off as these unaccompanied adult or children uh, in order to get a speedier process once they get in there. There is a uh, website that kind of does a lot of uh, background news that you're not going to get in mainstream media. It's called the uh, Gate uh, Stone uh, Institute. And it's a nonpartisan, uh, nonprofit international policy council. It's kind of a think tank in educating the public um, with, the, with the mainstream media fails to report. But they had a, quite a few interesting things in, in what was going on here. Forty years after the Swedish parliament... Uh, unanimously decided to change Sweden into a multicultural society, the violent crimes had increased 300%. The rape, over 1,400, almost 1,500% in the cases. And so Sweden is now number two of the list of the top rape countries in the world. Next to South Africa is the highest rape country in the world. United States is third. Australia is number eight on that list, by the way. Significantly, a lot of these reports don't touch the background on the reports uh, of the rapist. <clears throat> and so one should also keep in mind the statistics of the second generation uh, of immigrants are counted as Swedes. So, again, that stuff's not being counted for. Uh, but an astounding number of cases, the Swedish uh, courts have demonstrated sympathy for the rapist and have acquitted suspects who have claimed that the girl wanted to have sex with five, six, or eight men. On another moral issue, again, as the Bible says, as the days of Lot and Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. So you're just going to see immorality, you're going to see perversion, the increase of homosexuality, and also we're seeing major pushes on transgenderism. It's amazing to see the reports that are coming out there. Uh, The government, uh, out of Newsweek on Monday, said the U.S. government mandates girls' locker room access for transgender students in Illinois. So what they're doing, eh, this is just total madness, what you're starting to see happening. And it's getting more increasing uh, in the schools, in the public. Okay, So the the government said on Monday that it's going to... um, uh, stop its federal, you know, or or lose its federal funding if it doesn't cater to the transgender in the locker room in the school system there. So the government said the separation and the changing uh, uh, places was discriminatory because it was subject to the student to a a stigma and a different treatment. Um, The the school system, again, the district uh, said that uh, that this was an issue that was uh, critical for schools nationwide. The superintendent uh, of that school system uh, in the statement says, uh, what we offer is reasonable and honors every student's dignity. So that's more important than doing what's right. Uh, So, again, the district received over six million dollars in federal funding, you know, on its compliance with non-discriminate rules. 
What you're starting to see here, and there's a couple more things I'll share with you in just a second. It's just a load of rubbish when it comes down to this whole issue. When you're allowing these boys to change in front of girls and requiring the girls to change in front of him, you know, I, I don't know how it's to, besides it's just wrong, you know, it's immoral. But the problem isn't simply just the non uh, transgender predators that can easily be transgender in order to gain access to get the girls locker room. You know, they're, they're pretending and they're perverts. They're getting in there. Oh, I'm transgender. I'm going to go watch these girls change. You're starting to see the downfall to this whole notion here. And again, uh, by allowing any man, by any persuasion to watch girls in the bathroom or change their clothes, is a, it's appalling and it's exploitive. And it doesn't matter if the man is transgendered or regular gendered or quasi-gendered or whatever confusing name you want to throw to it. Um, you know, if he's a man, he doesn't belong there, period. And as you're starting to see, this is part of the snowball effect with the homosexual movement, the transgender groups, the lobbyists, activists. You can never appease them. You give them an inch, they'll take a mile. OK, they want boys to play in girls teams. You know, they're just changing the rules. You know, it's a safety issue. It's a, a perversion issue. And uh, even just using boys, use the, the girls' locker room. Something's wrong with the culture and the society when they allow this to happen. University. There's a university in Wisconsin, in, um, in Milwaukee. They're offering a, 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 a female feminization therapy for male students claiming to be transgender women. So part of the university, this transitioning at this University of uh, Wisconsin, uh, they have this whole, you know, voice, speech, language, you know, clinic to help people transition to uh, work through the voice disorders in adults and children. You know, the university has over 50 uh, gender exclusive restrooms on the campus and guarantees students the right to use any bathroom that they please. So you start to see there's going to be major problems and predators going on, perverts going on through this whole thing. The website also contains a lot of uh, coming out as transgender. And, and also, they have these myths that they're trying to uh, eliminate for these transgender people, such as the myth that transgender people are confused. That's a myth that they say. No, it's not. It's fact. Uh, they also say that uh, the myth that... Uh, um, that uh, transgender people are not sinners. That's part of their myth. And, um, or, or that they are sinners. And then uh, there's also, there's no cure for transgender people. So they're trying to de-escalate this whole issue there. Um, a daycare worker, Christian daycare, Houston, Texas. Uh, this came out on Friday at the Brett Bart Report. Christian daycare workers are fired for refusing to call a little girl a boy. So these two daycare workers have been fired, refusing to go along with the center's transgender agenda. So, again, their whole religious liberty are being violated. The two were fired after refusing to call this little girl a boy. The two male uh, parents of the six-year-old girl, says something right there, uh, told employees at the school to refer to their daughter as a boy. And then they gave her this little boy haircut as well. Um, and so in this interview, it's not the problem so much with the gender issue. It's with telling this young girl, those children, um, that she was a boy and to use the boy's name that they wanted her to use. Even the fact is she's not a boy. And so, um, Houston has had many other issues. Again, there was a whole vote that happened this last week on Tuesday, it got shot down, which really trying to, the underlining thing is to give more, protection and um, uh, for the gay and the transgender people. So when they do that, it's basically going to go against the rigid. So if you don't agree with it, you'll be fired. But it's hate speech. If you just say, hey, I don't agree with this lifestyle, that's hate speech, even though it's not. It's just, hey, I just don't agree with it, you know. Um, and it's really a, a rally cry, you know, for Americans. They're tired of seeing their freedoms trampled uh, with these politically correct uh, stampede to redefine marriage and also sexuality. Um, and then on another final issue, again, on the economic thing, but we're going to see this thing play out. It's starting to have a ripple effect, and that is the um, the, the uh, economic issue, the problem that's happening in the United States. This last week, Obama signed a new law legislation 
on the spending debt ceiling. So right now they're over over $18 trillion, heading to $19 trillion by the end of this year. Okay, When he signed it, it increased by over $339 billion just on that same day when he signed it. But what you're starting to see is this economic disaster that's going to implode. It's just a matter of time. Still, the interest rate uh, was still at 0%. It's just a matter of time before they increase it. The, uh, the Federal Reserve has mentioned they're going to try to do that. When that happens, a snowball effect happens. The International Monetary Fund warned the world economy would crash if central banks would not continue their low interest. And uh, if the global economy was doing so fine, according to Obama and a lot of other uh, su- suggest, why is the largest shipping company uh, in the world eliminating jobs and scaling back on its uh, capacity? And this out of the Bloomberg report on Wednesday. Also, another report that came out with the trucking industry in the United States starting to slow down. The trucking industry, by the way, it's a good pulse to have a thermometer of the merchandising economy. Uh, it, with all the exports, imports, manufacturing, distribution, retail, and other you know, uh, sectors there. So the, the trucks, again, are a huge part of the real economy, what's happening. So you want to see a pulse of what's happening. They're starting to see just it's starting to slow down at this whole industry. It's a kind of a signal, not saying it's happening, but it's a signal, a warning sign. Watch the economy going to plummet. Why are some of the largest banks in the world uh, laying off tens of thousands of people? But the largest European bank is cutting over 30,000 jobs if the economy is going so well. Uh, if things are going so well in the U.S., why are some of the large um, retail agencies like uh, Target, they're slashing their uh, stores nationwide, according to the ABC report on Wednesday. The truth is we're not doing so well. When you look at the economies around the world, look how many countries are going bankrupt, like Greece and Puerto Rico. The global GDP is down 3.4% in so far this year. Uh, a report uh, in the Wall Street Journal uh, mentioned that. And also the total gl- global trading has plummeted to 8.4%, according to Zero Hedge website. So the truth is the economic problems are just going to begin. We've mentioned this many times before. So we, we have a long road ahead of us, but it's just something we need to be aware of. And that's part of uh, and, and this whole climate change issue is going to be another big thing that's going to happen at the end of this month in Paris. M- a lot more new regulations, the whole TTP issue that's gone on. Um, but these regulations increase in taxes, which affects businesses and businesses will go out of business. And when that happens, it affects the economy, does it not? And so it's also part of population control. So this whole new world order is starting to come in piece by piece, the control of people uh, in that way. And we say these things in these, in these briefings not to scare people, but to inform, to educate what's happening around the world. Uh, it serves as a wake-up call for those who are not paying attention to some of these news reports uh, or those who are ignorant of the signs of the time. And the important thing is we say each week, you know, to be ready, stay ready. Be prepared for whatever might happen. And most importantly, keep your eyes on Jesus and stay in the word. Amen. And that concludes today's update.